Hi. This video is about the drum trigger system native to Logic. A lot of people maybe don't know about this or particularly don't use it, but when I discovered this, it actually helped my workflow quite a bit, so I thought I would share it in a video now. So if you look here, I have a session loaded up with Pro Tools stems, uh, uh, drum stems that are comped and timed. And let's just take a listen to those. I also have a trigger on, uh, which is uh, normally the way people do this, um, uh, and that's you know a, a plugin like Trigger Two or Addictive Trigger or something like that. So the original kick sounds like this. All right, and with the trigger on, we have this. Right. So obviously the benefit is, you know, a little bit cleaner samples, nicer sounds. Um, you know, you're talking about samples that, you know, were recorded in some of the best studios sometimes. Uh, and, you know, lots of control in our mix. Um, however, they do come at a price and they are expensive, some of them. Uh, and, you know, let's say for somebody getting into this or maybe learning about it, you know, might not want to dive off the deep end right away. Um, so let's take a look at how Logic can do this for us natively. Uh, now, here's the snare sound. Cool. Definitely workable in the mix for sure on its own, but um, what we can do is add, you know, uh, qualities from samples to help bring out what's already there. So by pressing Control D, I've brought up the drum replacement slash doubling menu in Logic, uh, and which is basically a EX25 sampler, or 24, <laughs> uh, with acoustic snare sounds. Uh, they load up a sn stereo track um, for some reason. Perhaps the, snare, the samples were recorded or processed in stereo. Um, however, I'm going to go with mono, select mono for me. And I'm just going to listen. Now I can audition tons of different ones. Okay. And let's just say I'll choose any, any random one. Uh, and again, make sure we're in mono here. And I'll probably also gain it a little bit. Um, now, the what it's doing is creating MIDI information from the audio file transient. Uh, now, the relative threshold will you know either add or take away detail from that. Um, so if there's a lot of maybe ghost notes in the playing, um, you know, it could be smart perhaps to even leave lots of that up to the overheads and you know perhaps bottom snare mic. Um, but this, the sample will for sure add sounds on on the, the present hits. Uh, and, you know, you can have um, more than one as well. Now, uh, there are, you know, average attack times and, you know, timing offsets and such if, uh, if that's also needed. Uh, so let's um, click OK and process. Right on. So now we have a track of our sampler, which is loaded up with a, an acoustic sample. Uh, another thing I like to do is just get rid of these reds um, and make sure nothing is clipping hard or just you know, at the peak. Uh, and we can take a listen now. Right on, and you know, blend that in. So now, what what I can do is uh, press Control B on this, and I now have my. In an audio format, 
right? So let's mute this for a sec and hide it. And now we have audio, which is a lot more familiar, uh, which can also go back in our Pro Tools. So um, that's one way in which I use the drum, trigger, and logic. Another way is, let's say I have a sample, like from Splice here. Great. Uh, and I like the way this sounds. However, maybe I want to isolate it. Or maybe I want to add a kick sound to it. So here's how we do that. First thing I do is add a high cut. And really just isolate the low frequencies where the kick lives. Now I can control bounce this in our session as well. And it doesn't matter what we name it because I'm about to delete it also. But um, we can see if we we have our kick frequencies and that's a lot easier for me to sample or trigger. Uh, now let's do that same thing and this time we'll say kick just because that's what we're trying to do. And we can listen. And I'm not too worried about how it sounds, uh, more about, you know, just the right pattern right now. And let's just focus on the first bar here. And just delete the obvious snares and the rest of the sample. Perfect. Now we'll repeat that as it is a loop. And if we want one file, we can create that. And we conveniently have the sampler loaded up. So let's change it to one of your favorite kicks. And we can reduce the velocity as well as the gain. And that's another way to use the drum trigger in Logic. Um, so yeah, if you benefit from that, let me know. Um, I'm glad I could help. If you have any other questions, I'd be happy to answer them. If you have or want me to do an idea for a video, I'm also happy to do that. Um, thanks and yeah, keep rocking.